Hi, my name is Sarah Saldana and today's date is January 25th, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to show how I obtained a direct and negative stain um, from a sample of my teeth and my gums. So, the first thing I did was I labeled one slide, one direct M, one meaning it's the first slide I was working with, direct meaning this was the direct stain, and M because this was the sample from my mouth. So what I did was I um, drew a dime-sized circle on the back of the slide um, just to kind of go ahead and label where I was actually going to um, put the swab, uh, the sterilized swab that I use um, to get all the microorganisms in my gums and my teeth. And I went ahead and using that sterile swab after I got all the microorganisms that I could, I went and I swabbed it in a circular motion on the front side, front face, of the circle and I ran it through the flame of this candle five times so not to put in direct heat just to go ahead and set the sample um, I let it dry and then afterwards I put it inside of my staining dish I put one to two drops of this crystal violet stain after I let it sit for about a minute I rinsed it off with just normal tap water and I let it dry before looking at it under the microscope so while that was drying, I got my second slide and I labeled it 2, negative, M. So 2 meaning this was my second slide I was working with, negative meaning this was going to be my negative stain, and M because it was um, going to be a similar sample. I used another sterile swab, um, got some more microorganisms from my teeth and my gums, and um, instead of using the crystal violet stain, I used one drop of this Congo Red, place it kind of towards the top of the label on the front face, and then I agitated the Congo Red with the swab, trying to get all of the microorganisms from the swab transferred onto the slide. I used this kind of empty blank slide, and at a 30 degree angle, I went ahead and I smeared the Congo Red down the slide. Then I waited for this to dry before looking at it underneath the microscope. And I can go ahead and show some of the pictures I was able to get. So here is the first. We've got, this was, um, I believe, the Power 4 magnification. Can't really get a good light on it. There we go. Um, and this was of the direct stain. This was probably the better photo that I could get. There we go. And then for the uh, negative stain, I was able to get, so this was the, um, the lowest magnification of the negative stain. Here, I was able to get a little more with the medium magnification. And now, this was maximum magnification. But I was able, I wish I could handle that glare better. But as you can see, it kind of, obviously it was better magnified. And yeah, so those are the two stains, the direct and the negative stain. All right, so in this video, we are going to be doing differential stains of the three nutrient broths that, um, I have already been incubating E. coli, S. epidermis, and S. cerevisiae. So I'm going to go ahead and start with E. coli. I'm going to lower this so we can see what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to light this candle. We will still be using aseptic techniques to go ahead and make sure that we don't contaminate the broths because they may be used in future labs. So here we go. All right, so I've already got this slide, and I've labeled it E. coli. It's the first sample I'm going to be working with. And I've done my dime size um, circle on the back of the glass. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my nutrient broth, E. coli, right here. I'm going to go ahead and sterilize the lip of the broth first. There we go. I've got my inoculation loop here placed in my cup of 
alcohol to go ahead and sterilize it. Leave it in there for just a little bit. I'm going to make sure this stays sterile. Just running the lip through the flame. There we go. And now with this inoculation loop, inoculating loop, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to place it in the tube, careful not to touch the sides. I'm going to get some of this E. coli and I'm going to transfer it, again not touching the sides, onto this circle, this top part of the slide. There we go. I haven't had much growth of these bacteria in the agar plates of the previous lab, so I just want to make sure I get enough of the sample here so we can go ahead and see it later underneath the microscope. So there we go. That'll go in bleach later. I'm going to sterilize this before I cap it again. There we go. Now I'm done with this nutrient broth. And now using this clamp, I'm going to heat fix the E. coli on the glass slide. So I'm going to run it through the flame about five times, just a couple of seconds over the flame. There we go. There's three. There's four. There's five. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and let that cool. We're done with this for now. I've got my tray here, and I've also got my crystal violet, my iodine, my decolorizer, and my safranin. Here we go, where'd it go? There we go, safranin. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the E. coli, actually I'm not gonna put it in the tray, I'm just gonna put it over the tray. And with the crystal violet, gram stain number one, where is that, here we go. I'm going to be putting one to two drops Again, on the front face, there's one, there's two, and I just, without touching the glass, I want to move it around, there we go. Awesome. So now I'm going to wait 60 seconds to go ahead and let that sink in. Again, this is the E. coli sample. I can put the crystal violet over here. And I've got my cup of H2O right here. And since I'm using the staining tray, um, I don't want to have to keep rinsing it out, so I'm going to use this empty cup to go ahead and put the water in, just so I don't keep having to go to the sink, rinse this out. And so I'm going to give it a couple more seconds. Again, it's just sitting over the tray with the crystal violet dye. I kind of want to move it around just a little bit. There we go. All right, so again, got my water. I'm gonna just carefully rinse it. There we go. Awesome. Now I can put this on the side, again, putting it over the tray. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add gram stain number two, which is PVP iodine. Again, I'm gonna do two to three drops. And then again, I'll wait 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and just dab off the end there. We've got one, two, three. Again, just moving this around, not touching the glass. Awesome. All right. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. Actually, since it's still wet from the water of the rinsing, it's kind of all over the place. I want to make sure it actually gets over the sample in that dime-sized circle we have. Oh, whoops, good thing it's over the tray or the staining tray. You can still see a little bit of that crystal violet that's sinking in. The iodine is just also going on in. The next ones I'm going to be using are the decolorizer and then this half ran in. So now we can go ahead. Here we go, this is the cup again, my H2O. I'm gonna go ahead and just rinse it. Awesome. All right, 
And these last two stains, the decolorizer and the safranin, I'm only going to need to wait 30 seconds before I rinse the slide. So here we're going to use two to three drops of the decolorizer. There's one, two, three. You can see the crystal violets kind of starting to wash away there just a bit. Again, I'm going to wait half a minute before rinsing it out. And then after the um, gram stain number four, the saffron in, I'm going to wait 30 seconds, I'll rinse the slide, and then I'm going to place it on this paper towel to go ahead and completely dry before I'm able to look under a microscope and kind of see the different bacteria, the E. coli, the S. epidermis, and the S. cervicii, um, and what that looks like with this differential stain. So here we go, rinsing it off, that iodine or the decolorizer, I'm sorry. All right, and last but not least, Safranin. I'm gonna do two to three drops. There's one, two, three. There we go. And I can cap that. And I'll be doing again the same process um, the antiseptic techniques or the aseptic techniques and um, this differential stains for the other two um, samples as well. Let this sit about 30 seconds. So, I believe. Afterwards, I can upload those photos, and that'll be the end of the differential stains lab. Here we go. Last but not least, rinsing it off with the H2O. There we can go. Awesome. So, can't really tell about what's much on the slide there. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and let that dry on a separate paper towel, and I can check that out under the microscope at a later time. All right, so now that I'm done with exercise two, the differential stains of um, S. epidermis, E. coli, and S. cervicii, um, I want to go ahead and show um, the maximum magnification, so 600x um, of each, bacteria. So here, with this first one, I've got S. epidermis. Here is E. coli. And there is S. cervicii. 